watching in the man cave right now none other than the lovely sam crosby equally delightful but uh, just soaking up the lack of sun in canberra right now is of course none other than matt canavan senator looking so happy there just tie and everything it's just i don't want to say it's more comfortable up here in the man cave mate but it is more comfortable <laughs> uh, so let's get straight to though the federal government and starting to put in place what we've talked about this was announced literally the day before the election so they could say they had a mandate for it which is new laws the bigger environmental protection agency the nature positive program they've been trying to push for a while matt what's the latest on this how close does it get what's uh, what's your sense of it well uh, the rumors going on around here are that the government will not pursue this uh, uh, before the election they have got the laws in parliament right now it doesn't do everything we feared, but it does set up this sort of useless new cop on the beat who will be unaccountable uh, to elected officials and most likely just delay uh, environmental approvals further. That's uh, almost certainly what the Greens wanted when they insisted on this. So it doesn't look good. I, I think, I personally believe the reason the government is not pursuing it right now is because they're holding it back as negotiating coin uh, for a hung parliament after the election. Uh, we can see that is on the mm. books now. Uh, and it's things like this that all Australians should be feared of, that if you vote for a Labor Party at this election, you'll have no idea uh, what will come out the other side. Uh, it'll be a complete and utter surprise. It's a bit like Forrest Gump's bo box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So and you might end up with a nut uh, like Adam Bant, who is put in then charge of our environmental laws and stops lots of jobs being created all around the country. So, uh, so again, right, the, the government sells this as, well, this is just a logical progression in trying to sort of build the framework around better environment, uh, things to do with climate change here. Um, but, Sam, clearly, if it's the Greens who are going to end up in a position where you can't pass anything through the Senate without them, and if potentially, if the polls are correct, you won't be able to pass a, a bill in the lower house without them, then it's a much wilder version of this bureaucracy <coughs> that they will at the very least be able to turn the dials up on. Look, I'm not nearly close enough to the scuttlebutt and the gossip that um, uh, Matt's talking about as to whether or not this is going to be a bargaining chip in a hung parliament. He may well be right. He may well be. I don't know. Uh, the, the way forward on this, I think, in, in a constructive and useful fashion, is for the Liberals and the Nationals now to sit down and come up with a piece of legislation that they can live with. I mean, I, I agree. I don't want any piece of uh, uh, environmental regulation needlessly restricting development approvals or, or restricting jobs. I, I dare say the government doesn't want that either. So the best way to assure that we all live, and, and I, I genuinely think the best form of, of any kind of regulatory uh, oversight body is a bipartisan one. You know, business knows that it's going to be there for the next 20 years because both party signed up to it. So, Matt, give us an idea, right? What, what, what are you concerned about when it comes to an environmental protection agency or nature positive? And I know we could fill the rest of the hour, but well, just, we, we just can't do what we, yeah. We, yeah, we can't do what Sam suggests because we don't support uh, putting uh, bureaucrats, empowering unelected bureaucrats uh, with a life or death decision over job creating projects in this country. I believe in democracy. I believe in accountability, ministerial accountability to the people. We oppose that. We fundamentally oppose that. And the other problem with this bill is it doesn't include the reforms that were suggested in the Samuel review of our environmental laws that would actually uh, reduce red tape and, and free up job creating projects. The government's ignored that and is just pursuing this green dream of creating this, this, uh, this empowered bureaucracy uh, to stop projects. So we can't really negotiate on this because we just fundamentally don't support that. Uh, I don't support Canberra-based officials here being in charge of what happens all around our country uh, for very important projects that are lifeblood, uh, especially of country towns in Australia. There's also something, Sam, that I'm just thinking philosophically here, mm. right? Um, the government trying to create a new bureaucracy to turn around and say, not our fault, their decision, right? Um, not the first to do it, but this is what they're planning to do. This is also the structure in and around the censoring of the internet, which is, of course, if a government tried to censor the internet, that would be disgraceful. But we just cr gave more powers to somebody else to decide what misinformation is and to go off and, 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 and create fines off the back of it. Philosophically, where are you on this idea? Because, because the, only, the only check we have on the bureaucracy is ministerial oversight, uh, is a parliament where question time can come back and forth, is the Senate estimates. But the reality is that most of these organisations just say, computer says no, we all move on, nothing let, happens. Let me, That's let me, not a democracy. Sure, but let me give you another one, the RBA. 
you know, the RBA is the second most trusted uh, institution in Australia behind the High Court. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's run by experts, largely uh, with a dispassionate view, and they just go out there and they try to achieve inflation between the, the 2 to 3%. But the rate. RBA is never a broker in a dispute between two people or walks onto your property and say you can or can't no, do that. No, that, that's fair enough. I would say it's ha it has a, a much bigger impact on Absolutely. the lives of every single Australian uh, rent yeah, and buying, Yeah, but it's a technical whatever. decision. I mean, it's, it's, it's a technical decision, Sam. The... the, the the problem with the environmental law space is that it is a balancing of values and priorities. There's no particular science. The, 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 the RBA has a set target. They work best, I believe. They've gotten into trouble in the last few years when they've tried to expand their mandate. Haven't exactly done very well recent, in recent times, the RBA. But I grant you that over there, most of their history, they've been good. They've been good when they focused on one technical aspect, which is hitting an inflation target, which they can do, can do by controlling one tool, that is monetary policy. Sure, sure, sure. There's sure. nothing so, equivalent to that as in assessing the complex details of the creation of jobs, the destruction of local environments that have to be balanced up on a values-based way. Those types of decisions should be held by elected people who are accountable to the public. Uh, and I think we'll go and get into ourselves in a lot of trouble if we continue sure, but, uh, to but lean back. And then COVID's a good example. We're all told the experts. An absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. Uh, because all the experts did was simply apply the public health experts, applied one v set of values, which was about public health, and forgot about a whole lot of other things that have to be balanced at the same time. Well, and the premiers weren't in charge. It was the public servant that was advising them, all the rest. Sure. I, I know we want to have a philosophical conversation here, right? But let's remember two things. One, the EPA was an, an idea of Richard Nixon, right, in the 1970s. <laughs> yeah. This is this is hardly a left-wing conspiracy uh, uh, out there. But two, the sorts of things that the federal EPA is going to uh, look at is dumping at sea that is currently not not overseen by any state EPA, uh, waste imports and exports, uh, ozone um, uh, uh, pollution. Like, you know, I, I agree you can have all sorts of intellectual debates ozone. about... It is from the 1970s then. I think. <laughs> sure, it's still it's still a thing. We're, like, back, we're, back, uh, we're back here. Chemicals can oh, still right. be pumped out to destroy okay. the earth. But, but this is the point, right? We can I thought have we'd fix that with yeah. hairspray. We can have yeah, interesting okay. philosophical conversations yeah. about it. That's but at the end right. of the day, there are still a bunch of basic, boring, regulatory sure. things that need to be policed. Sure, but it would be The, the laws by which should absolutely be subject to yeah. democratic oversight and democratic governmental mandates. But my concern is... Yeah, that it would have been nice the if the Labor Party put this out before before the night before the election well, that, and that would have allowed that's the thing. some... But also, and the negotiations around yeah. all of this, NDA, locked all, all <clears> the rest <throat> of it, and then just presented at the end. Process matters. This is one of those processes that can either be... Uh, matches up to the spin, or as soon as sunlight gets it, it gets it the way that, uh, that Matt talks about it.